What up, y'all? Welcome back to Sexton Sobriety. Today, I'm going to talk about the frontal lobe and addiction. So let's get right into it. It's said that the female frontal lobe is done developing at 21, whereas the male frontal lobe is done developing at 25. And so my personal opinion through just my research is that when you start using a substance at a young age, this affects your frontal lobe. It affects the development. The frontal lobe is responsible for emotional regulation and impulse control. So at a young age, if you start using, it's basically taking away your impulse control and you're relying on the substance for emotional regulation. This causes an unhealthy relationship with whatever substance it is, whether it be something really hard and crazy like opiates and benzos and stimulants or something more benign like cannabis. And so I'm not gonna sit here and say like, oh, cannabis is a gateway drug or anything like that. I'm just saying that any mind altering substance at a young age can negatively affect your frontal lobe and the way that you deal with reality, your reasoning, you know, your impulse control and all that stuff is very important. And I want to share on how I think this kind of manifests and can actually set people up for addiction. So Usually with people that grow up in a certain community, they start realizing at a young age that, hey, all my elders are using either alcohol or substances to deal with life. And it becomes very clear, at least it was for me. I was like, okay, so this is how adults deal with everything. They, they do this and this is like their solution. And so this became very clear to me at a young age. And so basically you're being conditioned and programmed to use substances. And I'm not saying, oh, you don't have any responsibility or you don't have any say in it. No, I'm just saying that as a society, we normalize this. And so people start thinking, hey, this is what I'm going to do when I'm older too. I was resistant to that, but needless to say, I ended up becoming a drug addict. So at some point I was willing to try to change the way that I felt, you know, and I got addicted to that anyway. So basically I think it's basically a cycle. And you could say it's also rooted in the generational curse of addiction and alcoholism because you learn from your elders that, hey, this is how you deal with life. And so then when you start having traumatic experiences, they're very hard. It's hard to have these experiences. It's very concerning, Um, you know. And so then when you're presented with an option that can take away your feelings or that can change the way that you feel, it's super enticing because you're like, oh, man, like this this is making me feel numb or disconnected or like everything's going to be okay. And so that starts the cycle. And so basically at a young age, a lot of people will do this for the first time and they start thinking, Hey, this is how I'm going to deal with life. Okay. And so that affects the way that your brain grows. And so you're basically training yourself. You're like a lab rat. That's like anytime that I have external stimuli that is overwhelming or unfavorable, I'm going to press this button which is using or drinking, you know? And so it's like, you're literally a lab rat and you're just teaching yourself and programming yourself to change the way that you feel because that's how everyone deals with reality. And I understand this because man, that's exactly how I saw it. And you know, I'm not hating on this either. I just want to make it clear. I just feel that we need to talk about this with complete accountability for the younger people out there that don't understand that they're basically shooting themselves in the foot when they start using a substance at a really young age. And so I would say I only advocate for adults to use substances if they don't have issues with addiction. You know what I mean? I just, that's the standard that I uphold. I know that may not be real realistic and you know, I understand that, but that's just how, how I feel about it. So I try to maintain that and to promote that, you know, when I talk. So, so yeah, I think basically what happens with the frontal lobe is that when you lose your impulse control and your emotional regulation, you're more likely to do things that are not in your character. So that is what happens in addiction, you know, literally like, and then you're like the part of your brain that uh, motivates you to eat and to drink and to get sleep actually gets overrided as well and is just only trying to get you to use. And this is scientifically proven. And so basically you're fighting with your brain. Addiction is not only fighting with reality and trying to avoid it and escape it. You're also fighting with your own brain. And so it's like, you have to take steps to deprogram yourself and to reprogram yourself. And that's what recovery is. So basically, you know, after years of going the wrong way, you have to start going the other way and it's unknown and it's scary because you've never gone that way before. And it's also like super intimidating because your feelings are back and you're, you know, you're in the moment and you may not want to be and your traumas are resurfacing and you're reliving them. And so I just want to say that, you know, it's very clear where addiction will take you. And it's not because someone like someone's not fundamentally flawed if they're an addict. I want to make that clear as well. 
Like it has to do with cultural conditioning, trauma, decisions that you make. So you have to take responsibility for that and a lot of other stuff. So, you know, it takes practice and repetition to, to change. But with that practice and repetition, you can have a psychic change, which changes you physically and you can create new neural pathways. So that's what, what I advocate for in addiction. I'm sorry, I've been all over the place with this, but I just wanted to try to make this very direct and, uh, you know, kind of short and just say, that I'm against young people using substances because it affects their frontal lobe. And I'm not doing this whole just say no thing, no. I would prefer that people are using substances that can't kill them, you know, but I understand that people are gonna experiment and that's just how it is. Anyways, that's my opinion when it comes to the frontal lobe and addiction. I think it plays a huge part in that as well as other parts of your brain. I'm not a neuroscientist. I'm not claiming to be, you know, this is just from the little research that I've done, what I was able to, you know, kind of decide and come to a conclusion with. And yeah, that's really all I have for today. Much love y'all. Please be easy on yourselves.